Boxing King Media in association with Box Raw. Ben Davison, a big night for your man this Saturday. I was looking online yesterday, Ben, and I came across this picture and I thought this kind of sums up this fight nicely. I've got a picture of Lee Wood just walking to the ring. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. It makes up Lee Wood, yeah. It does. It's quite a good and I'll, I'll put that up on the screen when people are watching when this back. When he's doing his check weight, I told the, uh, I told the guy that came over from the ball, I said, uh, you need to take into account £10 for Lee Wood's pair of bollocks. 100%. And I think it's key and I'm going to push the narrative this week and make sure fans are aware that they're getting this fight this Saturday, which most hardcore boxing fans are looking forward to, is because of Lee Wood. Say that again, sorry. And I think it's key that the fans are aware that they're getting this fight this Saturday night because of Lee Wood. Yeah, Lee Wood picked Maurizio Lara, not... This isn't a mandatory defence or it's been thrust upon us. We picked Maurizio Lara, so... What's interesting is I spoke to Josh Warrington a few days ago and it's I'm amazed at the amount of respect between both of them. There seems to be like quite a friendly rivalry between Josh and Lee and on. I'm sure he's going to be there Saturday night cheating Lee on. Yeah, uh, Josh Warren's a phenomenal champion, a uh, phenomenal fighter and a great guy. And I think that there, there's that mutual respect because they both know what each other have gone through to, to get to where they've got to. And, um, you know, there, that's a massive fight with or without any bad blood. So Definitely so. The experience Lee had last time, I guess, he's got dropped by Conlon in, t in front of a packed out arena. How much key is that experience taking him into Saturday night? I just think in terms of belief and sticking to a game plan and, and those kind of things um, it's uh, you know it stands him in good stead but um, you know we knew that from Kanzu and, and Reese Mould that he's able to, to be disciplined and stick to a plan and um, you can trust him to do the right thing um, and give his best to do the right thing um, in the fight and that's that's the main thing that you can ask for from a coach you're, you're no stranger to being the trainer in the corner against a big puncher explosive fight and obviously been up against Deontay Wilder before from that experience to some of the other fights you've been in where does this rank in, in cases of like say nerves or fear or whatever that you've got for your fighter in, in the home corner it's not fear it, you know it's just understanding I think you know going into it and denying that there's there is no risk and of course there's a risk anything can happen in boxing and when you're in against a the puncher they, they have the chance to, to turn the fight um, at any moment and that's with both guys that are in there this, this Saturday and that's why it's such a big fight that's why everybody's tuning in because both guys can, can switch the other's lights off and uh, change the fight in a, in a flash of a moment so um, but you know I believe that Lee is the better drilled the better prepared and um he knows exactly what he needs to do and, and smart enough to set the traps to, to create the scenarios that, that favour him in the fight. Definitely so. Uh, I just want to get your opinion on a couple of other matters. Uh, Tony Bellew came out this week and he said that he sees a lot of flaws in Tyson Fury. He felt that he saw a lot more flaws in the Chisora fight. Um, what, what, what do you make of that? Is there more flaws in Tyson or do you think he's getting better or whatever? I think that Tyson's always been the type of guy that, that rises to the opponent. Um, I think that throughout his career, you've seen him have fights against guys that he was probably heavy, heavy favourite for, not perform to his best. People have then questioned him when he's gone into these big fights and he's always always um, produced the good. So um, I don't think that you can take too much from individual performances for, for, in, for Tyson because of what I just explained there. And just uh, the, the other side of it, Anthony Joshua, the, there's a lot of talk online about ticket sales, YouTube numbers, etc. Any idea from your viewpoint why that may be, uh, that the show didn't sell out straight away, like all previous AJ Stadium events have been sold out within 24 hours? Yeah, he's, he's not got all the momentum behind him right now, has he? But um, that's part of the rebuilding phase, you know, a couple of, a couple of big wins, a couple of knockouts and a couple of good performances um, you know with Usyk he hadn't but I think there was a year between them two fights maybe more uh, so he hasn't been the most active um, so I think that build, rebuilding that momentum things will, will quickly change he's two time heavyweight champion of the world so I don't see that being an issue 
and uh, another topic and I know you're always watching uh, all the other young fighters that are coming through uh, Adam Azim received a bit of criticism uh, for going 10 rounds at the weekend I did speak to Dalton Smith earlier because he shared a similar experience when he went the distance with Casey Benjamin just wanted to ask you what you made of uh, the, the show uh, and the fight in itself and also on the back end of that uh, what Josh Taylor tweeted about um, Adam Azim being a superstar my ass, something like that Politics. Uh, I think uh, Adam put on a good performance. I think that he's a young lad that's coming through. Um, I think Santos was brought over to be knocked out because he didn't get a knockout. This is what you expect. However, they're invaluable experiences for him, and I think that um, I think that. It, you, don't, you didn't know what to get from Santos because of the record and where he come from. Hasn't really boxed anybody. But if he was to box somebody on the domestic scene and go the distance of someone of a, of a like a Casey Benjamin, I don't think the criticism would be the same. But at the same time, he doesn't need to be rushed like that. Um, there's nothing wrong with going the distance for these prospects. It happens all the time, um, all over the world. But fans get caught up in these knockouts and that but that's not where they develop you know a 90 second fight blowing someone over that's not where they develop so uh, he's coming along very well and um, you know I, I believe that you know he keeps going the right way he'll, he'll reach the top and uh, they're just experiences you've got to have along the way and he would have gained so much from them 10 rounds. And then you know, what you said at the start I think you, you gave a quite a short answer so do you think Josh Taylor's tweet is more uh, like a politics type thing because of the relationship with the McGuigans or do you think that was a genuine uh, opinion? I don't know. I haven't got anything to say on that, you know. You'd have to ask Josh. <laughs> I'm going to do hopefully what I see. Uh, ben Davison, is there anything else you want to add for? let you go about, you know, the rest of your stable when we can see him out or anything like that? No, nope, that's it, mate. You know what I like about you, Ben, is the closed answers. You leave very little room to ask another question. Do you know what it is? Because when you do say something, it gets then interpreted and then interpreted and then taken out of context and things like that so I'm very wary of that uh, I've probably been guilty of that previously of saying things that are quite easily taken out of context so uh, yeah I'm very, I'm very wary of that now so you left yourself open now I'm going to ask you one last question is there one particular interview that you did that because you're going to have one that stays in your mind and you think fuck that got misinterpreted big time nah, not, not, not one I've probably done too many of them uh, doing the same thing leaving things open for interpretation so Ben Davison as always I appreciate your time thank you so much